When you think of Cave Story, you don't really think of joke weapons, do you? You got the Missile Launcher, capable of firing multiple rockets for high bursts of damage, and the Spur, the upgraded Polar Star, which is by far the most consistently powerful weapon in the game. But then there's that one weapon. Oh, what was its name again? Oh yeah, the Bubble Line. The rules for this challenge are simple. Before obtaining the bubble line, I must be a pacifist. After that, all killing is fair game. I cannot use any cheats, scripts, or outside support, except emotional, to boost the bubble line's firing capabilities. I will also be playing in normal mode for obvious reasons. Other than that, enjoy the video. Also, make sure to like and subscribe. This is the longest I've taken on a video in a long time, so I would really appreciate it. The start of this challenge is quite simple and rather boring. I'm basically following VG Myth's pacifist run until I'm able to obtain the bubble line. So no killing mo- what did I just say? After a quick restart, because I'm stupid, I get the challenge underway, starting off with my first necessary kill, the door. You have to kill this door in order to progress. If you try to interact with it, it just says dot dot dot. I need as much health as I can to survive all of the hits that are coming my way, so grabbing life capsules are a necessity. After grabbing a shiny thing in the water in the Mimiga village, I make my way to my first boss fight, which thankfully is optional, which I then skip. Grabbing the key to Arthur's house, I get to the egg corridor, and here's where the real pacifist challenge begins. Needing to traverse the whole corridor without killing a single enemy and gathering all the life capsules that I can, I make my way to the true first boss fight, Igor. And the fight is mostly a breeze, even with my level 1 weapons, and after some more dialogue, I make my way back to Mimiga Village, making sure to not kill anything in the egg corridor. After that, our next stop is Bushlands, and let me tell you right now, the things I did here should have been reset, but it's a little too late for that now. I accidentally try to go straight to Chaco's house to get the jellyfish juice early, but that doesn't end up working and I have to go back and pick up Santa's key and let him back into his house. After that, he gives me the fireball, a usually decent weapon, but not today. I'm only using bubbles. He also tells me about the fireplace in Chaco's house and how I would need to put it out with jellyfish juice. I go to Chaco, get the info about the jellyfish juice, and here's where I should have reset. Instead of playing pacifist like I said I would, I end up just murdering everyone to kill the Karara. Oh well, I guess. I fight the Karara for jellyfish juice, and here's where the challenge starts. I'm finally able to kill, and I do so by decimating everyone in the grassland for levels. I fight another Karara for jellyfish juice, and put out the fire in Santa's house for charcoal, which will be needed later. For now I have to fight another Karara to put out the fire in Chaco's house. After a few other fetch quests, I now fight the first difficult boss of this challenge. Ball frog. Using the bubbles as a shield and burst damager, the fight actually goes quite smoothly, and I beat him on my first attempt. Freeing Kazuma, I go back to Mimiga Village and have some more dialogue interactions before making my way to Sand Zone. Starting the fight with Curly, I intentionally get hit by her machine gun and go to level 2, so my bubbles shoot out like a machine gun instead, making the fight a lot easier. She offers me her machine gun for my Polar Star, which I thought about grabbing, but I decide to go against it, as I would not have been able to level it up. I then... Oh. Yeah. If I only had the bubble line, the challenge would have been soft locked and I would have had to restart from the beginning. I go to the right a lot in Sand Zone and make my way to Omega, which, let's be honest, even in a regular playthrough is a joke. The main limiting factor to this challenge is my bubble line running out of bubbles, but I figure out quickly how to balance it. I go back to the Sunstones and start the dog fetching quest, which actually takes quite a while because if I get hit for 3 plus damage, even with a max level bubble line, it drops down to level 2, which is the most annoying part of this whole thing. I go into the warehouse and fight Rabbit Toroko, and after some careful dodging and planning in the moment, I beat her on the first try also. I get teleported to the labyrinth, which honestly wasn't too hard to traverse in the first part, even if I did almost get leveled down. Going through the labyrinth also wasn't too hard, and after talking with Curly, I get to the old clinic and fight one of the harder bosses of this challenge, Who Black. The projectiles that he spawns destroy my bubbles before they hit him, and he spawns them after taking 10 damage, not to mention the orbs he spawns also deal 3, and he himself deals 5, making any damage in instant level down, ruining the fight because you only deal 2 damage with each bubble in level 2, effectively making it a failed attempt. After 3 attempts I finally kill him and go to the next boss, Monster X. And this fight was rough, let me tell ya. Getting hit by its treads makes it a run ender, leveling you down from max to level 2 with no extra XP, and all the projectiles in the first phase deal 3 as well, so I needed a plan. I run away and spam at the projectile launchers when it opens up and go to it so it opens faster. After that it's an all out bubble fest as I put massive amounts of bubbles 
bubbles in its core, finally killing it after 4 attempts. I jump over Professor Booster and get to a boulder. After some dialogue, I started the next Balrog boss fight, and this was actually a lot harder than expected, as the missile positions are random every time and can result in some unfair damage, not to mention the missiles also deal 5 damage, making every hit an instant level down. Finally, after 4 tries and figuring out the patterns of the missiles depending on where I jump, I make it to Labyrinth M, probably one of my favorite places in the game. The music, atmosphere, and everything make for the perfect calm before the storm that's coming up. After going through the labyrinth, I find myself at the core, where after unjamming and fixing the entrance, I go in and fight the second most difficult boss of this challenge. This fight is an all-out bullet hell, with projectiles and missiles and everything going everywhere, dealing 3 plus damage a hit, leveling me down and making the fight very annoying. I get nowhere close to beating it on my first attempt, which is a good sign that this is going to take a while. After 12 attempts, I finally kill it, with my strategy being getting as close to the core as possible while dodging the attacks of the miniature cores by jumping. Of course, I wasn't going to do this no hit, and that was part of my plan, to sometimes take damage from the mini cores attacks to deal more damage to the core itself. Curly also put in the work during this fight, as her minigun is able to kill the projectiles in one hit, as well as deal a lot of damage to the core. My goal is to stay as close to the top of the arena as possible, as dodging and dealing damage while being on the ground is nigh impossible. After playing it safe, during the last bit of health, I finally yes! kill it after 40 minutes of finally! attempts. After Misery and Doctor escort the core, it looks like my time is finally up. The water starts filling the room, and... still be alive. Will you use the tow rope? Yes. Now it's time for Waterway! And I'm gonna be completely honest, even with the addition of the air tank, this area is quite boring. So after making it to a small cabin located near the jellyfish, I put Curly on the bed and with some knowledge I get from a book in the bookshelf, I learn how to service flooded robots and drain the water from Curly. After some dialogue, she becomes unconscious again, and I take her with me. Make it out of the Waterway finally, and... The Iron Head fight actually wasn't too bad, and after some careful dodging, I end up beating him without taking any damage. Imagine how humiliating it must be to die to a bubble gun without damaging your opponent at all. And after making it back to... Hey, where is everyone? Enter Arthur's house, and... After grabbing the spur for no reason in particular, I go to the egg corridor where everything there is destroyed. Traversing this wasteland is tough with only a bubble line, and after some trial and error, I make it to a house. Only through here, you see there's a chest and there's an opening. So normally what you can do is you can open this chest and you get like, like an increase of 10 missiles, but you have to fight a boss called the Sisters, which is basically two dragons. But I don't need missiles, so I'm actually... This is, um optional by the way, so I'm just gonna skip this. After skipping the sisters, I keep going right and eventually make it to egg number zero. Eat hatch safely. Want to escape with me? No! We'll see. <clears throat> anyway, after declining Kazuma's offer, I traverse upwards on the outer wall. I keep going up and eventually find myself at the top, where I meet a scared Mimiga. You'll come in handy later. After leaving and exploring the plantation for a bit, I find a hideout with a Cthulhu member and Curly. After talking with the Cthulhu member, I find out I need a special memory restoration mushroom to bring her memory back. Oh yeah, by the way, Curly's memory is gone. I go to the Mimiga's camp and find a Mimiga that just likes to fish. And after talking with them, I go down to the lake where they have found something shiny in their bucket. I take it and it turns out to be a key. After going across the water, I find a room that requires the same key with a teleporter in it. And I use the yes, teleport. teleport. I found you, killer robot. I read the letter. I finally am able to use the teleporter, and using it takes me to Arthur's house. I go to the cemetery and find a door up in the corner all alone, which was once previously inaccessible. After going inside, I find a mushroom and talk to them. And after picking the correct dialogue options, it gives me a mushroom badge. Which is useless. I then fight it for itself to restore Curly's memory, and this fight actually turns out to not be as easy as I thought. It ends up taking me three tries, but I eventually beat it and gather Mob Pignon, which I then go to Curly, and after feeding her the mushroom,
After getting a lot of lore dumped on us, we get the Iron Bond from Curly, and now it's time to do the last main quest of the game. After talking with Momorin, she takes our booster and gives us a Mimigum mask to get a sprinkler for there to be enough power for the rocket. And after gathering all the parts, the rocket is fully built, where after taking it up halfway, I find a dog who gives me a life capsule. Truly really why dogs are better than cats! I then go into the last cave, and... Time for the real challenge to begin. My first attempt did not really go too well at the start, but after making it to the XP capsules and getting level 3, I traversed my way to the Red Ogre, a mini boss only fought in the secret version of the last cave. After fully expecting him to end me, I end up beating him and completing the secret last cave in my first try, which I was not expecting. I make it to the balcony and after saving in the prefab building, I take on the last and hardest fight in this challenge, the terrible trio, as I like to call them. I kill Misery without taking any damage but upon making it to the doctor, here's when things start to go wrong. Everything except his crystal, including himself, deals 5 plus damage, making 2 hits a level down to 1, where the fight becomes impossible. On my second try, I actually get him to his second phase, where I end up getting down to level 1 and dying because I had no strategy. Finally, after attempt 11, I beat the doctor's second phase and make my way to the undead core. My first attempt, I had no clue what I was doing as a strategy and end up dying very early on because of that. Now, let me tell you the strategies for all of these bosses. My strategy for Misery was simple, just keep spamming bubbles and gathering XP and health from the bats as needed. The doctor on phase 1 had a little more to it than just firing the bubble line, as I needed to be constantly moving so he wouldn't spawn on top of me. When he bursts with projectiles, I needed to focus more on dodging than actually dealing damage, and sometimes even that was impossible. But after whittling down his health, I get him to phase 2. Now I spam bubbles until he spawns bats, where I make a shield of bubbles for the bats, otherwise they would overwhelm me, and I finally kill him without getting hit once. I have the level 3 bubble line, 45 HP, and a dream going into the undead core's room. Now for my strategy for the undead core. At first I go straight for Misery, making sure to kill her first while also dealing enough damage to Sue, but not killing her, while also not getting leveled down or dying to Sue or the core itself. And finally the stars align, and I kill both Misery and Sue near the same time, making the core open by itself, while also being at level 3. The fight with the core is actually very intense, getting leveled down to 2 and then 1, making me think that this run was over, but then finally, on attempt 25, with 4 HP to spare, this happened. Yes! It's done! It's dead! Woo! And with that, the challenge is over. The Undead Core is defeated, and the island is finally safe. While the credits roll, I just want to give a special shout out to Yeterary41, Green Devil, Heavy Press, Butte, Mesa, and you thought this was over, didn't you? Well, welcome to True Bubble Line Hell. Welcome to the Bloodstained Sanctuary. You know why you're here, and you know why you clicked on this video in the first place. As the ultimatum to any challenge run in Cave Story has to end with this, doesn't it? The projectile and arrow hell of this place is just filled with- no Actually, way, it wasn't no that way. hard, and I beat it on my second <laughs> attempt. Dude! <laughs> Doing a true bubble line only run would be genuinely impossible, but I guess you all want to see the Balos fight, so here we go. The fight starts as you imagined, with me turning the opposite direction and letting Curly spam the nemesis into Balos while spam clicking the fire button on my controller. The same goes for phase 2, as I wait for Balos to stop jumping before getting as much damage in as possible by jamming the fire button on my controller. You know, maybe this is why my hands still hurt, even though this was recorded in December of last year. Phase 3 goes as a regular playthrough, where where I spam the nemesis into the eyes of Balos, where he then gets into phase 4. At first, I thought the best way to kill him would be staying on the platforms, but considering I'm not a pacifist, I end up sitting in the spikes on the ground as they only deal 2 damage and shoot Curly's nemesis for dear life. And after 10 minutes of the bloodstained sanctuary, I had done it. Wait, no way, no way. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> what? 30 minute stream! Balos had been defeated. So, can you beat Cave Story's true ending with the bubble line? Well, yes and no? 
You can beat the game's normal ending for sure with only the bubble line, but with the help of Curly and the Bloodstained Sanctuary, it makes a true bubble line only run nigh impossible unless you've modded the game, which I had neither the time nor energy for. And, well, that's pretty much it. Special thanks to Yenterary41, Descendium, Mama Hudge, Next211, otherwise known as Casper, Noid Ball, Bellavu, Mini Super, and also whoever watched this video to the end. Let me know how you enjoyed this video and what I should improve, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.